Yeah, so we expanded our technology in over the world, and by the end of the decade, by 2008, yeah, our company had grown into a multi-billion dollar company in America. Yeah, so... Hello guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. This is Sartash, YouTube, and today I have a new video, guys. It's about an inspiring story of one, an, an entrepreneur and a tech tycoon by the name Julius Mwale. And I hope this story inspires you. It's coming right to you shortly. But before you get to the video, kindly, I request that you subscribe and hit the bell if you haven't. Yeah, let's get to the story of Julius Mwale. I grew up in Kenya. I grew up in Kenya, on the western part of Kenya, yeah, near Lake Victoria. Yeah, and I went to uh, I went to school and I went to college. I went to military there in Kenya. I was in the Air Force, and then I went to America. Yeah, so when I went to America, so I was living in a homeless shelter in New York City. And you know, when 9/11 happened, I was in this homeless shelter, and I saw the twin towers come down. And so uh, uh, when I left the shelter, the idea comes to me. You know, the towers are coming down. And you know, there's a political upheaval in New York. And you know, every business is living in a city. And they were like, you know, the financial system of the city is gonna get under attack. And, and you know, someone has to do something about it. Yeah, so I made a proposal yeah, to the local senator, you know, for New York. The name was Hillary Clinton at the time. And, and you know, the proposal was that, you know, we can protect our financial system by having two levels of authentication. So we could have the username and password. And then we could have a second level where you have an image, a picture. Or you can have, you know, a biometric. And mine was biometric. Yeah, so the senator took the proposal to Congress. Yeah, you know, and it was passed in Congress in 2004. And it became effective as law in the United States in 2006. And my technology, yeah, became the golden standard yeah, for multi-factor authentication in America. Wow, wow, what an amazing story. Starting from Kakamega in a local village to being a multi-million dollar investor and entrepreneur. And now the part that we're getting to, I want to show you how the guy has been able to put up a mega city in, in, the, in a local community, actually in Kakamega. So let's hear from him. You know, I built my company. My company name was SBA Technologies. Yeah, so it was built up. And of course, it became one of the largest biometric companies in the world. Yeah, so we expanded our technology in over the world. And by the end of the decade, by 2008, yeah, our company had grown into a multi-billion dollar company in America. Yeah, so we decided, we said, hey, you know, I grew up in Africa, I grew up in Kenya. I want to go back and give back to community in Kenya, give back to the community in Africa. Yeah, so we took... Um, uh, $4 million invested into a feasibility study uh, with a U.S. company, a big U.S. company. Uh, we wanted to invest in our community in Western Kenya, you know, to be able to grow it. Yeah, you know, up. so we spent about $2 billion. So feasibility showed that uh, we needed a $2 billion city, a medical and technology city that will be able to stop people in Africa from going to India every year for medical treatment. And so we build up, you know, Mwale Medical and Technology City. Yeah, it's built around uh, 5,000 capacity. Yeah, you know, medical complex. Yeah, has a power plant. Yeah, you know, has uh, shopping and dining. Has an innovation park. Yeah, you know, and integrated, you know, within the community. This is a village in Western Kenya. And so what we did in this village with our IP, uh, we went in this village. And then, you know, we took, you know, an African village. And then, of course, you know, be able to upgrade its infrastructure system. Yeah, so we put in roads. We did about 150 kilometers of tarmac roads, you know, in this village area. Yeah, we did over 3,000 solar street lights, you know, in the city. And then we took the community that was there. It's in a county called Kakamega County. So we took the community that was there and upgraded their homes. Yeah, you know, so there are 35,000 people living in that area. So we upgraded their homes and they partnered with us in the city. And then, you know, they became, you know, landlords for the workers of our city. So we never moved them out. So the price of land grew from about $1,500 an acre to now over $100,000 an acre for these families. 
So, you know, they became the new African middle class. The city opened in 2019, and we have this big hospital there that is treating patients from the county. The county is two million people. There are two million people in this county. We are treating them without paying any copay or any money yeah, to get treated in our hospital. If they have a system that our vice president has done, it's called the National Hospital Insurance Fund. So if they have National Hospital Insurance Fund, they get free treatment. But the bigger part of that business is medical tourism. So, you know, we are bringing in medical tourists from the entire East African region. And we came to draw people from here in Botswana, you know, to be able to come there for treatment. Yeah, so we're getting 400 million people in this region for East Africa that used to go to India for medical treatment. And there were about 180,000 mil, of these people going to India every year, spending billions and billions of shillings. And so we've ended, you know, that, you know, that, that overflow of people going for treatment in India. So they're going to come and get treatment, you know, within the area. And we're expanding this, yeah, you know, hospital to 82 new locations through telehealth. Yeah, so we're working on telehealth with big American partners, you know, to expand it, you know, in Kenya and then outside the Kenya to African continent to make sure that Africa, because this is going to be the largest hospital in the world, in the world, you know, here in Africa, employing, you know, uh, 2,000 doctors, 5,000 nurses, and, you know, a lot, about 12,000 support staff. So this is a big investment in healthcare, making Kenya and making Africa to become, you know, healthcare, yeah, you know, make and medical city, yeah, you know, within the world. Wow, wow, I love that. That's amazing. And uh, so from just one idea to building the next company that all of us desire to even get a glimpse of that idea and be able to make that company. This is awesome. Yeah, long-term vision. So if you look at uh, Africa and you look at Kenya, so we have this continental free trade agreement. And what we need to grow Africa, we need what we call IP, intellectual property. So this city is an integrated master development plan. So what it did is that it integrated the local community yeah, into the entire city, into the entire plan that we've done. And so what we've done here is that we want to take this to the continent. So we've taken it so far to Democratic Republic of Congo, Cameroon, you know, Ghana, Sierra Leone, Zambia, and now we're doing Mozambique. So there are 18 locations in 12 cities in Africa that, you know, we have, you know, about 5 million acres of land under now our management and control in Africa that we're expanding this project and this city, yeah, you know, all over the country. Yes, indeed. Talk about the power of vision. You can see that just like a mustard seed, starting from that small idea to building a multi-billion company through just an idea, what a vision. Indeed, we must have a vision. If you're studying something or you want to be able to develop something in Africa or the world, it's you have to have a vision. You have to look into the vision and look into the future. And then, you know, you focus on the vision and you get it through. You see it through with, you know, building around the community, building around a cause that supports, you know, the entire population in the world not just your own cause. My wealth is how many people are moving out of poverty. Like, you know, that's my billion, how many people are moving out of poverty. Not how many billions I have in the bank and all that. And that's my focus, being a man of God. I want young people to have a vision. Anybody with a vision, whether you're young and old, you focus on that vision, you'll be able to build the world. Oh, amazing. What stands out for me is that the power that he talks about, that it's not about the billions that he has in his account but about eradicating poverty in here in our nation, Kenya. This is amazing. This is something that we must emulate. I believe I also have a vision. Sometime I'm going to let it shine. So this has been an inspiring story to me. I hope also that it inspires you to have a vision and to build yourself. Remember, this is a touch channel, and I always, always want to bring you things that are of value to you things that will impact you and your life to make a better life.